Welcome to this video on using the bookable time function in Microsoft Outlook. So this is a really great bit of functionality where you can block out parts of your diary and other users can come in and select the times that work for them for either information sessions, for one-to-one, -one, for appraisals, for things like that. It puts the onus on the other person to select that time and it limits what they can do. So they can't overbook, they can't book in times where you've already got meetings or other things going on. Or even if you've not got anything going on in your calendar, but you want to keep that clear, then it just really highlights the times that you are available. Really great if you've got office hours or something like that. So I'm in Outlook Online here and I'm currently in email, but I'm going to go to Calendar. And then next to the new event, there's a drop down. I'm going to click on that drop down. And at the bottom, you've got bookable time. So when I click on bookable time, it's going to give me a pop up and it's going to allow me to create bookable time. So you can see the examples there are office hours, one to one mentorships as well. So that's a really another great example. If you've got a person you're mentoring, then you can still give them time to book in your diary when works best for you. So you're not having to go backwards and forwards because you know how painful that is. So you can add a title. So I'm going to put review time. Slot duration, so you can select the slot duration or you can customize it there. You've got 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 an hour. You might want to do like 25 minutes. You might want to do 55 minutes. If you want that, then that's absolutely fine, but it will default to 30 minutes. And you can see it's given people your full calendar. So my availability on this account is 9 till 5 p.m. And I can go in and change that availability. Obviously, it recognises if you've already got something in your calendar. So if you've got another meeting in there, it will block it out. But I'm going to just change this availability. And um, you can select all the time. So if this happens all the time, if this is office hours, if this is one-to-ones, it's going to happen every week, then that's fine. Or if it's a specific period of time, like you're doing reviews, you want to do them in a, a week's block, then you're just going to tell the system, I only want to show this between, let's say, Monday and Friday next week. And Monday and Friday next week, I have time. I don't have time on Monday, so it's not bookable. I don't have time on Friday. And maybe let's say I've got 9.30 whilst, let's just come back a little bit. One on Tuesday, I've got nine whilst, let's go a bit earlier, 12 on a Wednesday. And let's take off Thursday as well. So they're my two times that I've got available. And it's only next week because I've put a specific date range on there. So you can decide whether this is an ongoing consistent thing or it's just a one off thing to allow people to book in for a specific reason. And I'm going to click on save. Now that will show those customized availability. If I want to see that, I'm going to have to go into change availability to go in and have a look at what I've set. So let's just keep going down. You will notice on the right hand side as well, you've got tips there. So this is going to help you if you need um, any information. You just, it does remind you that your calendar remains private. So people, they might be able to see the cat book then, but they can't see what is going on. And it just really puts boundaries around your time which I think is really really nice. So let's just go back to the left hand side and look at the privacy section. So you've got two things here you can either set it as public or private. So public means anyone who can see your booking page can go in and book this time in. Private you need to send people the link or you need to see people need to be able to see your link in order to book the time and you can see underneath that it will automatically append your personal booking page, so the link to this, on your email signature if you want it to. So you could just have that available all the time. Otherwise, you would need to send people the link directly in order for them to go and do it. But if you want everyone to be able to do it, then absolutely append it and leave it as public. It's no problem. So 
next go down search for a room or location you can turn on teams meeting so when someone does book in something it will automatically generate a teams meeting link obviously it will go into your calendar and it will go into their calendar as well so you'll have access to that and you've got the ability to add a description as well if you want to do that so it's more information. So when you're happy with that, it's very simple. You don't have to do too much at all. You're just going to click on create. It's in the top left hand corner. And that's going to create your bookable time. So mine's very specific. It's got a customized availability. You can see it on there on the right hand side. You can see the booking page on the left hand side. I have the link there that I can copy. I can send it into any instant message, any chat or anything that I need to do. I do have the ability to share it as well. Go in and share via email and email signature settings again. So remember, that's a really useful function. So if it can be used by anyone, then you don't need to quickly, um, you don't need to constantly send it across. It will always be sent when you're emailing them. And looking on the right hand side, you can see there all the times I've got available and the booking bits that are going on. And if you wanted to go in there and have an actual look at the booking page, you can go and click and view booking page. So let me do that. Let's have a look at this booking page to see what it looks like. So this is what the users would see if they go in there and have a look and they have that link and they come in and book. So let's just have a look what they will see. Obviously, they can see what day we're on. But the only two days that I allowed access was the Tuesday and the Wednesday. So I'm currently on the Wednesday there. I can see the Tuesday there. It hasn't obviously. Ah, OK, that's interesting. I wondered why the timings didn't show, but you can see just above there, you are available. So this is picking up my availability as well as the availability of the person who set selected it and confirmed. So I can see that there's time in the booking calendar, but there's also time in my calendar. So this works really nicely. So I've only got these available times. What the user would then do is click on that time, click on next, and go through and fill that information in so that they could go in and then book that time. And remember, that would go into your diary and that would go into their diary as well. And you would be able to go on your bookings page and just have a look at that information if you needed to. But it would be a meeting in there. So it'd be nice and easy for you to manage. So one to definitely have a look, have a play around with, create one to have a go at like I have and see how it works, get someone in your team to book it in, to just play around with it and see what it, behaviors happen. Um, but a really nice bit of functionality if you want to give people the opportunity to book their own time for certain events or office hours or appraisals, reviews, one-to-ones, mentoring, anything like that. It's really, really great to play around with and it works really nicely. So please have a go at that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record next.